After the development of the first spacecraft in the 1950s and 60s, huge effort has been invested into improving spaceship design. Technology has, of course, progressed substantially in the past 60 years, and it's now realistic to think about designing craft that will travel further and for longer than ever before, and carry out comprehensive surveys and studies of our solar system and beyond. So for today's video, I'm going to explore the 15 most advanced spaceships ever made. Number 15. SpaceX Dragon 2 If the first space race was a competition between nations to travel beyond our atmosphere, then we're definitely in the midst of a second space race, where this time it's private organizations that are trying to do the same thing. Way ahead of the rest is SpaceX, which has already got contracts with NASA and has sent humans into orbit, and the company's latest design is one of the most advanced spaceships ever conceived. Known as Dragon 2, it's a type of reusable spacecraft that's mainly designed for missions to the International Space Station. It's got a four-person crew capacity, measures 27 feet tall and about 13 feet across. The capsule itself is put into space on a Falcon 9 launch vehicle, and it's able to support itself in free flight for up to 10 days, and can be attached to the ISS for up to 210 days. For power, the Dragon 2 has eight side-mounted Super Draco engines, which are used in case of an aborted launch or for attitude control when in orbit. Once there, the capsule is able to autonomously dock with the ISS, rather than relying on a pilot, which makes the entire process far safer than it's ever been before. With the Dragon 2, SpaceX has designed something that's far beyond what any other company or nation has produced for orbital flight, and has undoubtedly established itself as the world leader for the time being. Number 14. Cygnus Developed by Northrop Grumman, Cygnus is an unmanned cargo spacecraft that was designed in the early 2000s as an affordable and practical way to take supplies to the ISS for NASA. Measuring 16.7 feet tall and about 10 feet in diameter, it's launched into space on either an Antares or an Atlas V rocket and has a payload capacity of just over 3 tons. Each Cygnus spacecraft is made up of two basic modules, the pressurized cargo module and the service module. This design keeps the operational elements of the spacecraft separate from the cargo, which makes it far easier to service and maintain even when it's been loaded prior to launch. The Cygnus is partially autonomous in that it can be launched into orbit and be able to approach close to the ISS, but unlike the Dragon 2 that's able to fully dock with the space station, Cygnus relies on being captured by the robotic arm that brings it into the docking port. The Cygnus program has proven to be so successful that NASA's scheduled deliveries to the ISS through to at least 2026, and there are plans to further develop the spacecraft to hopefully use them to supply outposts and colonies further away from Earth in the near future. Number 13. Solar Orbiter The largest object in the solar system is, of course, the Sun, but after decades of sending probes into space to explore what surrounds us, it's only recently that we've been able to send anything close to it. This isn't due to lack of interest, but because the engineering challenges are so great because of the increased gravitational effects and the extreme heat. But the Solar Orbiter, which was designed by the European Space Agency and launched in 2020, is looking to change that. At a cost of around $1.5 billion, it measures 8 by 10 feet by 9 feet, and it's described as a sun-pointed, three-axis stabilized platform with a dedicated heat shield. This essentially means that the spacecraft is able to provide a stable platform in positions far closer to the sun that's ever been possible before, so that the sensors and experiments on board can perform their measurements. With the way that it orbits the sun, it makes an extremely close approach every six months, and this allows it to study the sun's atmosphere. In particular, the researchers are hoping to learn more about the sun's magnetic field, the solar dynamo, and events like solar eruptions. And the 10 instruments on board this solar orbiter are specifically calibrated to look at the sun's surface in various different ways. This is one of the most advanced objects humans have ever sent into space, and the result of the mission will provide a much deeper understanding of the stars throughout the universe. Number 12. Shenzhou the Shenzhou spacecraft is the vehicle that supports China's manned spaceflight program and first launched with a crew in 2003. It's based on Russia's Soyuz design, but is larger and has more modern improvements that have helped make China one of the leading space nations. With a name that translates to mean the divine vessel on the heavenly river, it's made up of three modules. There's a forward orbital model at the front, the re-entry module at the center, and a service module at the rear. 
Measuring 30 feet long and about 9 feet in diameter, it can be adapted to various ways depending on mission requirements, such as the ability to fly autonomously or to focus more on cargo or passengers. The only section that ever returns to Earth, though, is the re-entry module, and this is relatively cramped with three seats for the crew. The Shenzhou is, as a result, very good at taking things into orbit, but far less capable of bringing anything, apart from people, back to Earth again. It is the Shenzhou that's being used by the Chinese Space Agency to deploy and build a new space station in orbit, and will also be the main way to travel between it and Earth once it's operational. Rather than planning an entirely new system, Shenzhou has been successful enough that occasional upgrades are all that are needed, and spacecraft with this design will likely be used by China for decades to come. Number 11. Spaceship 3 Virgin Galactic is another company that's planning to offer commercial flights into space, and to do so have developed Spaceship 3. Announced in 2021, it's their most advanced type of space plane that's an improved version of Spaceship 2, and it's based on designs that were first proposed in 2005 for an orbital spaceflight program. The first one, known as VSS Imagine, was also revealed in 2021 and will be what's used when the company finally begins offering flights to paying customers in the coming years. So far, only the Spaceship 2 has been used to take people into space, but the upgraded version promises to offer longer periods of weightlessness, be more efficient in the air and have fewer maintenance requirements, so it'll be able to be used far more often. Designed to be held beneath the wings of a carrier aircraft to an altitude of about 50,000 feet, the six-passenger space plane will then be released and its own rocket motors will engage and take the ship into suborbital flight. This will be high enough to see the curvature of the Earth and to experience some of the effects of spaceflight, but the hope is that with further development, it will be able to reach full orbital altitude and be able to offer transport to the ISS, and potentially even an orbiting hotel that's currently being planned. Pretty cool. Number 10. DART History has shown us that objects from space have the potential to cause devastating events across the Earth, and it's an asteroid that's thought to have been the reason for the last two mass extinctions on our planet. As our understanding and abilities in space exploration have improved, researchers have begun looking at ways to develop a means of protection against a deadly asteroid strike in the future, and the DART mission was the first step meaning Double Asteroid Redirection Test. It was an impactor spacecraft that had a mass of about 1,340 pounds and was fitted with navigational sensors such as a sun sensor, a star tracker, and a camera. The idea was that the path of an asteroid could be altered by smashing an impactor into it, and once a target rock was chosen, DART launched in November of 2021. It took almost a year to reach Dimorphos, which was a moon of an asteroid called Didymos, neither of which posed any threat to the Earth. In September of 2022, DART successfully collided with it and actually exceeded expectations. It would have been regarded as a success and potentially planet-saving if it had shortened the orbit of Dimorphos by at least 73 seconds, and in the end, measurements showed the orbit was reduced by 32 minutes. Further tests and studies are needed, but as far as an initial attempt goes, this was extremely promising and gives hope that should a large asteroid be detected on a collision course with us, there's at least a decent chance that it can be deflected in time. Number 9. The James Webb Space Telescope For years, the best images of the universe that we had were captured by the Hubble Space Telescope, but it was decided that a huge upgrade was needed, and this led to the design and development of the James Webb Space Telescope. Named after a former NASA administrator, it's arguably the most advanced machine that's ever been launched into space. Telescopes on Earth are limited in what they're able to see because of the atmosphere. It blurs the view, so the JWST was positioned as far away as possible in orbit to significantly reduce interference and get the clearest pictures ever. It operates at a temperature of negative 370 degrees Fahrenheit, or about negative 223 degrees Celsius, and is a primary mirror that's formed from 18 hexagonal segments that are made of gold-plated beryllium. It also observes light in a much wider spectrum than Hubble can, and it's able to detect much fainter light, too. Amazingly, this means that the JWST can see objects from much earlier in the development of the universe to around 180 million years after the Big Bang, which is around the same time that the first stars began to form, and around 100 million years before galaxies as we know them began to develop. The telescope only entered service in mid-2022, so we're really only at the beginning of what it's capable of, and with a life expectancy of about 20 years, it's truly an exciting time for space exploration. Number 8. Soyuz 
First designed in the 1960s, the Soyuz spacecraft was initially meant to be part of the Soviet moon landing program, but after American astronauts got there first, these plans were canceled and they were repurposed for orbital flight. Since then, the Soyuz has become known as the safest and most cost-effective human spaceflight vehicle, thanks in part to it having been in regular use for so long. It's been crucial for orbital missions such as transports to the Russian space stations and now to the ISS, which always has at least one Soyuz docked to it at all times in case there's need for an emergency evacuation. With a maximum crew capacity of three people, it's made up of three sections. The first is the spherical orbital module, which is where the accommodation for the crew is during a mission. Then there's the re-entry module that's much smaller and is the only part that returns to the planet with a small space where the crew can sit. And finally, there's a cylindrical service module that's fitted with solar panels and is where the instruments and engines are located. Only the re-entry module is covered with heat shielding, so the orbital and service modules are, therefore, destroyed upon returning into the atmosphere. While this may seem wasteful, it significantly reduces the cost and the mass of the aircraft, which allows for smaller rockets to launch it in the first place, and for more space to be given to the crew. The consequence of this, though, is that each Soyuz craft is one use only, and a new one has to be built for every mission. While Soyuz has been incredibly successful for the Russian Space Agency, Plans are underway to replace the design this decade with a new six-person spacecraft called Orel. This will take many of the features of the Soyuz, but will also be reusable, which will help to further reduce the cost and allow it to compete with other designs like the new ones from NASA and SpaceX. Number 7. New Horizons Astronomers have, for a long time, known about the presence of other planets in our solar system, but there's a limit to how much you can learn from just looking through a telescope, and most of what we've been taught about distant planets has been based on educated guesswork. The New Horizons probe is looking to change this, though. As part of the New Frontiers program, and in a little over a decade, it brought us closer to some of the most mysterious objects in space and gave us a much better glimpse of them than ever before. Measuring at about 7 feet by 7 feet by 9 feet, it was launched in 2006 on top of an Atlas V rocket. Controlled in space by 16 thrusters around it, it then embarked on a journey to the outer reaches of the solar system. It flew past Jupiter in 2007 and got within 7,800 miles of Pluto in 2015, before continuing on to the Kuiper belt and looking at other strange objects. It is still hurtling through space and could potentially still be operational by the time it leaves our solar system. It gives us a far better idea of what it's like out there. Number 6. Tianzhou China's space program has huge plans in the coming years, which include the completion of a new space station. To support these ambitions, they've developed a new unmanned spacecraft called Tianzhou, which was first launched in 2017. With the specific need to be an automated cargo craft for the Tiangong space station, it's able to automatically transfer fuel between other ships in orbit, as well as maneuver and dock itself without any need for human involvement. Measuring 34 feet long and 11 feet wide, it has a launch mass of 29,800 pounds, and it's able to carry up to 15,200 pounds of cargo. Five of them have been built so far, with a further one under construction, and they're each designed to carry cargo in either pressurized, semi-pressurized, or unpressurized conditions. With a name that means Heavenly Boat, it's the most advanced automated cargo spacecraft ever developed, and not only will it be crucial to supporting the space station when it's complete, it'll also be instrumental in building the space station in the first place. One of the reasons the ISS took so long to build was that each stage needed to be overseen and connected by astronauts. But with a further suite of automated systems, the Tianzhou craft will allow components to be taken to where they're needed and installed, all without anyone needing to be there. Number 5. Bepi Colombo A lot of our space exploration focuses on the outer planets and beyond, but that doesn't mean that inner planets have been forgotten about. Bepi Colombo is a mission by the European Space Agency and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency that's made up of two satellites that were launched together and are currently headed toward the orbit of Mercury to conduct tests. As the closest planet to the Sun, it is very difficult to look directly toward Mercury, so in many ways we know less about it than the planets at the furthest reach of the solar system. Bepi Colombo contains a huge amount of scientific equipment, though. 
with the intent of conducting comprehensive surveys of the planet, including measuring its magnetic field, its magnetosphere, and further understanding the makeup of its surface and interior. It was launched in 2018 and has so far conducted a flyby of Earth, two flybys of Venus, and two initial flybys of Mercury. And the plan is that it will finally enter the orbit of Mercury in 2025 to conduct some of the most comprehensive studies of any planet other than our own. To do this, it contains two orbiters that are attached to the transfer module and that are responsible for getting them into orbit. Once there, the Mercury Planetary Orbiter will be released with a payload of 11 instruments, and so will the Mercury Magnetosphere Orbiter, which has a payload of five instrument clusters. They'll both continue orbiting for at least a year and give us an unprecedented view of what the planet closest to the Sun is truly like. Number 4. The Space Shuttle used by NASA between 1981 and 2011, and based on a plan that was first put forward in 1969, the space shuttles became the first reusable spacecraft and were instrumental in launching satellites, probes, the construction and maintenance of the Hubble Space Telescope, and the construction of several space stations. With an estimated overall project cost of about $211 billion, five of the vehicles were built, and between them, they conducted 135 missions and spent a total time of almost 1,323 days in space. Their design, of course, was groundbreaking and incredibly complex, not just for the time, but by modern standards, too. In order to provide the functionality required, they needed to take design elements from aircraft and from rockets so they could launch vertically and then land as a glider, while at the same time maintaining a habitable environment inside to protect the seven-person crew. The space shuttle program will always be looked back as the moment that space travel became more efficient and adaptable, and there's a good reason why they stayed in operation for so long why the next generation of spacecraft designs all look to the shuttles as their starting point. Number 3. Hayabusa 2 It's easy to think of asteroids as a constant potential threat to life on Earth, but the future of space travel could well depend on them. That's because they're made up of various metals and minerals that wouldn't just be hugely valuable if they were brought down to our planet, but could also provide the raw materials needed to build ships in orbit and overcome the need to send them up to space from the ground. The science of landing on an asteroid or capturing one is extremely complicated, though, and many believed until recently that it was verging on the impossible. A Japanese mission called Hayabusa, though, has shown that harvesting asteroids is absolutely feasible, with the first probe successfully landing on one and retrieving a sample in 2010. It's the second one, though, Hayabusa 2, that's really showed the possibilities that technology like this can provide after launching in 2014. It caught up with a near-Earth asteroid in June of 2018 and surveyed it for 18 months before deploying a lander that took samples and then returned them to Earth in 2020. The mission has now been further extended until 2031, when it's expected to rendezvous with another asteroid. And based on the designs that the Japanese Space Agency has developed to do this, it's likely that many more will be launched in the near future to try and do the same thing and begin bringing significant quantities of valuable materials back to Earth. Number 2. New Shepard Blue Origin, it's an American aerospace company that's most famous for being founded by Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, and is another organization that's developing spacecraft for the potentially lucrative tourism industry. The company's vehicle is called New Shepard, named after the first American astronaut in space, and it's one of the most advanced spaceships to have ever been launched. It's described as being a fully reusable vertical takeoff, vertical landing space vehicle, and it's made up of two parts. The first is the crew capsule, which is pressurized and has space for six people inside. There's around 530 cubic feet of room, and it also has a full envelope launch escape system in case anything goes wrong, and its own set of parachutes and rockets to ensure a safe landing at the end of a flight. The other part of New Shepard is the propulsion module, which uses a blend of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as the fuel to provide thrust. Once it reaches altitude, the crew capsule detaches and continues on its trajectory, with the propulsion module reducing its output, and performs a controlled descent and a powered landing. With the way that it's designed, each component of New Shepard simply needs to be assessed following each flight, and while minor repairs may be needed, it'll need very little turnaround time until it's ready to go again. This significantly reduces the overall cost of launching a vehicle and why it's seen as a potential game-changer in the space tourism industry. 
So far, several flights with tourists have taken place, each experience lasting around 10 minutes. And as well as expanding this capacity, Blue Origin hopes that the ships will also be used by space agencies because of their capability of being used to carry payloads to orbit and potentially far beyond. Number 1. Orion NASA was responsible for developing what's often regarded as the best spaceship ever, the Space Shuttle. But since they were grounded, the agency hasn't had anything of its own. Instead, it's had to rely on the Russian Soyuz craft and more recently those from private companies like SpaceX. But with talk of returning to the moon and further manned exploration into the solar system, they've created the most advanced spaceship ever. The Artemis program, which began in 2017, has the aim of returning to the moon with humans in the coming decade. The technology from the 1960s that was used for the first moon landing is, of course, a bit out of date. So they've gone back to the drawing board and developed a new rocket called the Space Launch System and a partially reusable crew module known as Orion. Based on the same principles as the Apollo Command and Service Module, Orion is much larger and is packed full of the latest technology and enhanced heat shielding. It can, in theory, support extended flight times in space with up to 21 days of active crew time and as much as six months of dormant crew time, during which they'll rest in an attached deep space habitat module. Crucially, Orion has been designed in a modular way so that as technology improves, it'll be relatively easy to remove one part and replace it with an upgrade, which means the craft as a whole will remain on the cutting edge. With a crew capacity of up to six, testing is already underway to iron out any issues, but the first crewed flyby of the moon is currently scheduled on Orion in May of 2024, with landings coming in the years after. I can't wait to see that. I'll see you next time. Watch our future playlist for more top 15 videos about the future. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best future-related videos.